Okay, nomenclature of acids. We're going to be naming and writing the formulas of aqueous acids. And so that state, AQ in brackets, that symbol, is going to be written after the formulas of these acids. AQ stands for aqueous, which means dissolved in water. So the compound HCl is actually a gas at room temperature, and it goes by the name hydrogen chloride. The formula was written just like our ionic compounds. The hydrogen ion and the chloride ion cross the charges down and we get HCl. The name hydrogen chloride. It's a gas and when dissolved in water, an aqueous acid forms, which means a solution. So the HCl has dissolved in the water, the water's the solvent, and in doing so we form hydrochloric acid. So you'll notice there's no difference in the formula of HCl um, hydrogen chloride and HCl AQ hydrochloric acid. The reason we know to name this as an acid is that the AQ state is here, which tells us a solution has been prepared. So you will know that the substance is an acid when you see the AQ subscript and you see an H up front. So both of those are essential. You need to see an H up front and the AQ, and that's how you'll know it's an acid. Similarly, when you're writing the formulas of acids, you're always going to start with that H, and you'll always finish with the aqueous. And so that's what I've emphasized in this next point here, is that all aqueous acids do contain that hydrogen ion. So we're going to begin with binary acids. As the name suggests, bi, like bicycle, we think two wheels, a binary acid usually has two elements, I'd say 99% of the time. Never, though, will it contain oxygen. Never will it contain oxygen. You will always see the naming pattern, hydro something ic acid. For example, hydrobromic acid, hydrosulfuric acid. And so this common naming pattern tells you that you have a binary acid. And that's hugely important when you go to write the name. So we always start with the hydrogen ion, positive one charge, or one positive. And then we look at the root and go to the periodic table, and so the front side of your reference sheet, and find the bromide ion. And so we cross down our charges, just like we did with ionic compounds, and we will be in omitting those ones, and we finish with HBraq. Try hydrosulfuric acid. Okay, and so you'll see that we have the hydrogen ion and the sulfide ion, cross our charges down, and finish with H2SAq, so hydrosulfuric acid. Now the reverse, given the formula, come up with the name, it's very important to notice that, that we see the H up front and the aqueous. When you see that H up front and the aqueous, that is telling you that this is an acid. Now, does it follow the pattern of hydro something ic acid? Well, if it's a binary acid, it does. Does this acid contain oxygen? No. And you also see that there are two elements. And so it's going to follow that pattern of hydro something ic acid. That root, that something, comes from the nonmetal here. And so we have hydrophosphoric acid. Try part D. Okay, again, the H and the AQ indicate that we should be writing acid. Now, there's no oxygen present, and so I'm going to follow the hydro root ic pattern. The root here is from iodine, and so we have hydroiodic acid. Hydroiodic acid. Now, if you look at your periodic table, you'll notice that you have carbon and nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and then those halogens, right? And we have phosphorus there. So a quick sketch here. When you're looking to write binary acids, when hydrogen pairs up with carbon, that'll form methane, which is a molecular compound. Nitrogen and hydrogen will form ammonia, also a molecular compound. Hydrogen and oxygen form water. And so you're going to see that there are only six 
of these binary acids that you will be asked about. So hydrofluoric, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, hydrosulfuric, and hydrophosphoric. So we've already done four of those. You'll be practicing the rest uh, in the classwork. Okay, so binary acids, that takes care of that. Now, the second type of acid is oxy acid. Okay, oxy acids, just like the binary acids, always have the hydrogen ion and the aqueous. Okay, but unlike the binary acids, the oxy acids, as the name suggests, always contain oxygen. And so the only ions we have that contain oxygen are the polyatomic ions. For example, sulfate and phosphate, carbonate, nitrate, etc. And so from our polyatomic ion list, we're going to have polyatomic ions that end in eight and that end in ite. And it's these that we will be putting with the hydrogen ion to form the, acid, the oxy acids. When you have an eight ending, that ion will become an ic acid. The ite endings of the polyatomic ions, the name becomes an OUS, us acid. And so here's an example, sulfuric acid. Notice that the hydro is missing. That's very important. There's no hydro here. That tells us an oxy acid. So when you check the name, when you're given that name, if there's no hydro, it means you have an oxy acid. When you see acid, think H positive one. Now, sulfuric acid, the sulfuric ending, the ic, came from an 8 ion, which means that it came from the sulfate ion. So back to your polyatomic ion list, use brackets, sulfate, SO4, 2 negative. And so we can cross our charges down, cross our numbers down, and we'll see we finish with H2SO4. Now on its own, hydrogen sulfate, but with the AQ, sulfuric acid. Okay, go ahead and try B, C, and D. And actually, E and F are also there. Okay, so for sulfuric acid, we saw the H2SO4 AQ. Now for nitrous acid, again, it's an acid, so I start right away with the H positive. I know I'll need the AQ at the end. Nitrous, the US acid, came from an ite, ite so nitrite ion cross the charges down and we finish with HNO2 AQ. Acetic acid, well you'll need to find the acetate ion. That acetate ion is written as CH3COO negative in your table, but you could also group those carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens into C2H3O2 negative one, that's fine. And so we cross the charges down and we finish with HCH3COO or HC2H3O2. Now, just a comment here that the hydrogen, the acidic hydrogen up front, when you have an organic acid, which this one happens to be, that COOH pattern, you'll often see this hydrogen written at the end here. But I think for our purposes in grade 11, you know, it's sufficient that you follow the regular pattern and keep the hydrogen up front. In grade 12, when we explore organic chemistry, we'll be writing the H at the end, and that'll make a lot more sense as we study the structure. Okay, hypochlorous acid. So we cross our ones down, the hypochlorous. Hypo is not hydro, so I hope you were thinking oxy acid here. And we use the hydrogen ion and the hypochlorite ion, which gives us ones when we cross down, and we finish with HClO, AQ. Now for HClO4 AQ, we're naming it. So as soon as you see the H and the AQ, we know it's an acid. Is it going to be a hydroic acid? Well, oxygen's present. So no, there's no hydro. This is definitely an oxy acid. And so we need the name of the polyatomic ion, the ClO4 negative one. That's perchlorate. And so we change the eight to an ic. So perchloric acid. And then we have H2CO3 AQ, so the hydrogen ion and the carbonate ion. And that carbonate becomes carbonic or carbonic acid. 
Okay, that's it for the acids.